Where is it? We can't hear nothing. I don't hear nothing. It has got it. No sorry. Six twenty one. Okay. Yo quiero ver los que está aquí. ¿Quién es este? Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi, Rosemary. I'm just busy getting my uh, <coughs> camera to work. Oh. <coughs> Do we have to sign up to speak? Oh, I don't know. Oh, okay. That I don't know. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. I don't think so. Maybe he said, if you want to sign up to Hi, for everyone joining, please sign into the chat with your name um, and if you'd like to speak on a specific item. Hi, Paul. Hi, Jesse. So. The screen is shared, right? You can yeah. see the. OK, yeah. thanks. Yeah.
Hi, for everyone joining, can you please um, sign in in the chat and uh, let me know if you want to speak on a specific item. Thank you. Uh, for everyone joining, can you please sign in the chat and note if you'd like to speak on a specific agenda item? Thank you. I have my wrong glasses on and I could swear that it said you're supposed to sign in with your name and affliction. <laughs> Maybe that's, you need hearing check too. <laughs> For everyone just signing in, can you please um, sign in in the chat with uh, your uh, item that you'd like to speak on? And Carlin, I saw you just signed in for number 14. Bar Clark is actually um, withdrawn for this month, so you don't need to hang around. Just to everyone joining, please sign into the chat with your name and if you'd like to speak on a specific agenda item tonight. Okay, I'll give Herman one more minute to join. Um, but I will, let's get the meeting started. I will um, stop sharing the screen in a second. Okay. Oh, there's Herman. Okay, so um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Michelle Cooper Smith. I'm the chair of the CB3 um, SLA committee. Uh, my uh, colleague, Jesse Beck, will be helping me with the Zoom tonight. So thank you, Jesse. Um, just a couple of guidelines to go through quickly. Uh, this meeting is being recorded. That's per open meeting laws. Um, please sign into the chat with your name and affiliation. And if you'd like to speak on a sp specific agenda item, thank you to everyone who's done that. Um, the chat is only to be used to be signing in, sign up to speak or talk about technical issues. Um, the chat will go to Jesse and me. Um, I will announce when each agenda item is up for comment from the, pu the public. Uh, in addition to signing into the chat, I'll also ask you to raise your Zoom hand so we know who is still here to speak on the agenda item if you'd still like to speak. Um, we will ask that if you're representing a specific community group, please select no more than two speakers to speak on any one item. I'll, um, but you can please tell me how many people are there from that group representing that, that point of view that will help us. Um, please keep yourself muted unless you've been recognized to speak just so that we can keep the um, background music to a minimum. Okay, and then one other um, just reminder is that Community Board 3 has um, sort of a, a policy um, about how uh, uh, comments should come into the committees. Uh, I just dropped the policy into the chat. We ask that um, you please send in any comments um, 
to us by Friday at noon, the day, the week before the meeting, just because all of us have day jobs. So it, it's um, difficult for us to fully take into account any of your um, your comments if we, we get it the day of the meeting. Um, and we wanna make sure that everyone uh, has a chance to have their opinion recognized. And then um, I'm going to also drop my email address into the chat so that you have that. Um, Thanks to everyone for, for abiding by that so that we have the best chance to um, review your, your, your point of view. Um, so uh, the first item that we will consider, well, we already actually did this right, David, we already uh, voted on the, the minutes last at our last meeting, I forgot it's our second meeting of the month. Um, so I just wanna remind everyone, we are considering four items this evening. We'd had many um, withdrawals. Um, 215 Christie Street, which is the public, 43 Clinton Street, which is um, the Crossit Group doing business as Cafe Sky, um, a to be named entity at 106 Third Avenue, and a uh, entity at 127 uh, Avenue C, Two Perry's LLC. Um, I am just going to quickly look to see. Um, I think we're going to go in order tonight. Um, so are the applicants for number 11, the public New York here, 215 Christie Street? Yes, Michael is here. And, uh, hi. We should be joining. Yeah, okay. Hi. Is it okay if we start then? Hi. Okay. Great. All right. So I'm just going to hit the, the top points of this application, um, and then we'll go from there. Sure. Uh, Sorry, go ahead. Are, are you going to take roll? I mean, we got no minute. Do we take roll? We typically, we typically do at the very start of the meeting to see. Okay, even though it's the second meeting. All right. Okay, parliamentarian. All right, Michelle Cooper Smith, present. Jesse Beck. Unfortunately. David Crane. Here. Herman Hewitt. Herman, I see you. I'm here. Okay, hi Herman. Ellen Liu. Okay, Ellen is not here. Alex Militano. Okay, Paul Ceros. Yeah. All right, thanks guys. Thank you, David, for the reminder. Okay, sorry about that applicants. Okay. So we will now be considering uh, number 11, the public hotel, uh, 215 Christie Street, which has been operating at that location since 2016. Um, uh, obviously this is a previously licensed applicant. They're licensed there as well as many other places. Um, uh, this is for a stipulation change for the outdoor space in front of the hotel. Um, it's to add seats and also to add waiter service to the public garden um, in front of the hotel, um, if everyone has walked by there. So um, I'm just going to start because we received um, two letters from 10 Stanton Street, um, which is the uh, property that directly abuts the hotel. They share a, um, a parking lot and the public hotels um, windows look into 10 Stanton Street's windows. So um, we received a letter from the 10 Stanton Street Executive Board of the Tenant Association, who is not in agreement with the request for the application. Um, they had a lot of reasons why, including that the hotel um, does not do proper garbage disposal on behalf of hotel staff. Um, there is a lack of cleanup of debris left by delivery trucks, which are allowed to use the parking lot that is 10 Stanton Streets. Um, there's overflowing dumpsters, which allows garbage to spread um, around when there's wind. Um, recycling of large items, food and cardboard is not happening as promised. Um, loading and unloading of uh, commercial trucks in the shared parking lot after hours. Um, employees parking their personal vehicles in the parking lot without consent or notice. Um, the front loading zone of the hotel being used to park hotel personal vehicles causing customers to double park and massive traffic on Christie Street. Um, there, are, there are many more. Um, and the uh, Tenants Association would like us to know that they've worked with many um, administrative team members from the public hotel um, to deal with these issues. Um, and then we received another letter from another tenant um, in opposition with, with similar reasons. 
Um, so, uh, applicants, is there anything to clarify with what I said in terms of the application? Well, can you hear me? Yep. Yeah, hi, Donald Bernstein on behalf of the Public Hotel. Uh, just to, to, thanks, Michelle, just to clarify what the application is, uh, you more or less got it correct. The Public Hotel is a 25-story hotel. Uh, it has 17 floors, three below grade. Um, there are a number of food and beverage outlets on the lower levels and on the 16th floor and the 17th floor. Um, and it, there is a front garden that's sort of enclosed by shrubbery that was intended to be used just as a place for people to come out and sit. Uh, if they would like, they'd be able to go into the hotel, get something to drink, get something to eat and come sit outside or they could just come sit outside. Um, the hours that we negotiated with the community board for that space was 7 a.m. to midnight. Um, things have changed a lot in the past year. Outdoor space has now become critical for the survival of restaurants and other venues. And it's something that people want. They wanna be able to go out to eat and the most uh, the safest place to do that is to go outside. So we are not putting up these large structures in the street and Christie Street or on the sidewalk. All we are trying to do is take space that is already licensed. That front area is already licensed for the consumption of alcoholic beverages. And instead of making people go inside to get something to eat or drink, which is probably not their preference, it is safer for them not to have to go inside. It's safer for the staff and employees not to have more patrons come inside, rather to be able to serve them outside. Uh, the seat count as currently constituted and approved on our liquor license is 40 seats. We'd like to add a few more seats. Uh, we're talking about adding 20 more seats in a hotel that has a total occupancy of over 1,500 people. We're talking about 20 more seats in this self-contained closed area outside. There is no bar outside. There is no music outside. There's nothing late night outside. You're talking about people sitting down and being able to order food instead of going in. Uh, it's also beneficial because we'll be creating jobs by having to staff that that's otherwise not staffed. It could be half a dozen or more employees that will have to staff for that. So all around, we think that this is a benefit for everyone concerned. Um, some of the issues <coughs> you mentioned, Michelle, were uh, mentioned to us. Uh, I certainly didn't hear all of that. I'm not aware of, of the hotel receiving those issues. Um, none of them have anything to do with the change that we are requesting. Uh, I've heard no complaints about these, this front garden or any claim that adding 20 more seats to this outdoor garden or allowing staff to come out instead of having patrons go inside is gonna create a problem for anybody. Um, so, uh, you know, the issues that you're raising are all things that um, uh, we could address. We can have our manager and staff meet with people at 10 Stanton if they have specific instances of, of issues that are of concern, we can certainly address them. We have a, a, a detailed security team. Um, we can speak to our security team if they are things that they can do to monitor that parking lot uh, or clean up that parking lot in a way that may be more beneficial. We're fine with doing that, but none of those issues have to do with the relatively minor change that we're seeking in this application. Okay, all right, thank you. Um, uh, okay. Um, before we do anything else, um, let's, I want to do a straw poll of the committee. I think we've, 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 we heard really comprehensive stuff from the adjacent neighbors already um, to be able to um, make a preliminary assessment on this. So um, I'm going to say that I will be voting to deny on this. Um, David? Yeah, I would. Okay, Herman? Herman, what are you thinking? You're muted. <laughs> uh, motion to deny. Okay, Paul? I vote to deny too. 
All right, Jesse. Yeah, I'd probably vote to deny. Okay. All right. So Michelle, can I ask? Can, because I, I've heard nothing from the committee. I'm just curious to know the the basis. Um. Well, you can hear from me. I mean, I think that we, uh, when we, when we hear from people who are immediately adjacent to the property that they're unhappy with the operations, we take that pretty seriously. And I understand that there's um, a promise to 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 ameliorate that, but the property has been operating for a long time. And of course, if we vote to deny here, that doesn't preclude the the applicant from returning a different month once they've they've sorted this out with the with the tenants. I don't know if anyone else in the committee wants to say anything, but that's my position. I agree with you. Okay. Agreed. Um, um, go ahead, Norman. Yeah, you know, I personally, I live across the street. I mean, um, from there, and I have visited that place many times. And it was part of the um, discussion in the beginning uh, between the tenants. And well, even before the, before the the, the lot was purchased. Uh, I was involved with all of that. Um, I was in a discussion with the tenants and the developers and so forth. So I understand what was supposed to be done in terms of remunerations and assistance and all of that kind of stuff, but it has, it has not happened. It has not really not happened for those people who live in that building. Um, and in addition to even what is in those letters, there are a lot of other things if you go into that has not been addressed by the, the hotel or the developers that went to the agreement between the hotel and the tenants. So we I could say even, from, my, yeah. from my experience, um, that will put me forward in terms of denying any additional benefits to that hotel without a proper situation that allows the tenants to live in uh, quiet enjoyment of their the spaces that they have. We haven't even been given those letters. We weren't even given copies of these letters. I mean, I'll just say that we were in we were in communication with 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 uh, with people from the hotel representing the hotel ahead of time, asking for an agreement with the tenants association, and that that obviously didn't happen. So, I like I said, this does not preclude you from coming back again in a different month. And I understand all the safety concerns, but um, there's obviously a lot of of issues, um, and and there's not a lot of trust. So that needs to be solved before I think it sounds like this committee will. We'll vote to approve, even if it's a you know to your in your perspective a minor change. That's just that's you know that's sort of what we were we're saying. Um, so with that in mind, um, I understand that there are people here from the community who would like to speak, but given that it's already pretty clear that the committee will deny, um, I'm going to ask if there are one or two people, preferably from 10 Stanton Street, who can really speak to this, who are who are directly impacted. Um, if there's anyone from 10 Stanton Street who's here who would like to speak, could you please raise your Zoom hand? And if you are not from 10 Stanton Street, I'll just ask you to respectfully put your hand down, given that we're already basically made a, made made the point of denial. So, um, okay, I see one hand. Um, Sante? Um, Jesse, I don't know if you have a time already, but Sante, are you, are you still there? Okay. Um, I think I saw another hand, Debbie. Yeah, it was uh, Anthony Giannetti. Oh, no, sorry, um, Anthony, I think you put your hand down, but Debbie, um, Debbie, is, is that Debbie Gonzalez? Yes, I'm here. Okay, did you put your hand up? Yes, I did. Okay, go ahead. Um, thank you. We're not in agreement with the um, outside cafe, Mr. Bernstein, because um, it is about trust with us. We've had a lot of issues with the hotel, with the noise, with the traffic, with you people coming onto the property. And then the noise at the cafe, we don't have a problem with the garden. The garden has always been there. But when you want a full blown cafe now, 
That brings on a whole different crowd. That brings on a whole different issue that when we have asked you in the past about garbage, about noise, about people being on the property, nothing was really done. It's like you put a Band-Aid on it. Your security team was a joke. They never really could handle the amount of people. We understand that people want to eat outside, but they shouldn't be eating outside 30 feet away from our window because the noise travels with dishes, clanking, and everything else. I appreciate that you said that you did not get letters from us, but did you reach out to the Tenant Association? Because Especially Cheryl sure. Freeman in the back. Okay, Absolutely and Cheryl, did. you can speak now, go ahead. Especially Cheryl, Cheryl Freeman in the back. Cheryl, is there something you'd like to say? No, I'm just, I'm listening to Debbie and whatnot. Nobody, I'm not, I live back here. I'm in the heart of it. Okay, thank you. Okay, All right, Debbie, go know, ahead. Y'all classify as low income, ain't nothing low income about us or whatnot. Okay. Okay, Debbie, is there anything else you'd like to say? I just want him to understand. It's just that we understand we're doing a pandemic. And to be honest with you, with this pandemic that came along, it actually brought us some type of peace. You know, from the noise, from the, the garbage pickup, from the smell. <laughs> And yes. now you want to come in and put that on top of us again without any, with, with going to more or less CV3 opposed to coming to the tenant. We are a community here. Pandemic is real at this time. And it says social distancing and putting 60 or adding seats to a social distancing community seems like redundant to me. So that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you. Um, uh, Sante, are you, I, I think he's not connected to it. Anthony, do you live at 10 Stanton? Uh, no, but I live at 261 Bowery. I, my uh, building backs onto and my loft backs onto the, okay. uh, the hotel. All right. All right, go ahead. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to read you a letter. You just muted you yourself, Anthony. Anthony, you muted. Okay, I'm, I'm, I think I'm on. <laughs> All right. Uh, sorry about that. Um, whatever, uh, you know, the, the letters about whatever happened to fair and quiet enjoyment of our premises, the expansion of benefits for the well-connected and well-healed appears, uh, uh, appears to continue apace. How does corporate individualism mesh with local citizenry? Anyone who has experienced what the public has wrought in their back garden has good cause to be concerned about this presentation before the board. Noise and a fair amount of it is what those of us facing that garden have experienced. Music played overly loud, large gatherings, private events, uh, uh, and rentals for the, the uh, areas have uh, carried on uh, without regard to neighbors on, on the adjoining site. My heart goes out to the residents of 10 Stanson Street and what they must endure nightly in the earliest hours of the morning when the hotel is in full swing, garbage trucks, delivery trucks out their windows and all else. Uh, I should add that the, uh, if the, uh, this garden were ever to even be considered, uh, the, this uh, um, um, outdoor space uh, were ever to be considered, uh, the hours uh, that Mr. Bernstein has uh, suggested are 7 a.m. till uh, 12 a.m., uh, the garbage gets picked up at 4 a.m. And I can tell you, I hear I hear those trucks and, and I'm, I'm around the corner from the edge of the building, but the nature of the way the buildings uh, has been constructed and its proximity to the loft buildings along the Bowery uh, creates a um, an echo chamber that is quite loud. Um, uh, why should the public care? They're making money on the garden that once was a refuge for low-income families with children and garden plots and quiet enjoyment. Um, if the neighbors are inconvenienced so that the public and it's uh, so what if the neighbors are inconvenienced? Um, it's, a, it's given that drinking groups raise a decibel level within their own group and the surrounding areas. Those of us adjoining the public have witnessed it as is anyone passing an outdoor outside kiosk adjoining a bar these days. As okay, an thank you, Anthony. Do you have, can you wrap it up? Um, as an individual who lives on the barrier and whose private outside area joins the back garden, 
uh, and the club ab above, I can, I can attest to careless behavior of many entitled individuals and the dis disruptive noise these places generate during the day and into the night. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Anthony. All right, um, I'm going to make a motion to move this into the into a resolution. Um, I think we, think, we know. Our sorry, Michelle. If I can just say one quick thing that 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 concerns me, and 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 then we can. Yeah. move. I feel like we're all in. We're all in. Uh, ready to move forward. Um, is that the is you know, however you're planning on moving forward, it, I, I would like to hear how it's addressed because that space is, it was, the idea is to be used that it gets people off the sidewalk, that who are gonna be coming in, like you said, you have a big, some big spaces and bar and restaurants. And so the part of the idea, and, and Herman was there when this was all being, you know, mitigated originally, was that keeps people ideally away from the sidewalk, it helps mitigate noise. So by creating that as a space where people couldn't congregate. And I, I get that people don't quite congregate there now. It didn't quite work out in that same space. I would, um, if this has come before us again, I would like to see how how the mitigation of the waiting of groups for as things start to open up again is addressed if, if we're removing that space and that space is not gonna become an area with additional noise. So I just wanna, I wanna bring that up if that was, if we see it again, that I'd like to see that addressed. Thanks, Jesse. Thank you. Um, okay, let me just quickly share this. Okay, so here's um, a draft resolution that I worked on. Um, basically, the, the, the gut of it is um, enumerating uh, some of the concerns that we received in the letter from the uh, Tenant uh, Association Executive Board. Um, anyone from the committee have any specific additions they'd like to see in here? Is it, um, okay. is it possible ahead, that some of what Jesse mentioned uh, about the space was original design to remove, um, you know, like a wearers that the, the yeah. space was as a is that, is that the purpose of the space was used to mitigate sound and congestion. So there is concern over something like that. Whereas the front garden was, uh, can I just ask, Susan, are you on? Is that does that sound right to you from the initial, the original application? Is Susan on? Um, I I don't have the resolution in front of me, but the thing is, uh, one of the problems the residents has was were the lines um, to the um, particularly when facing up. They, not on the sidewalk, but on the left side of the hotel to go into um, the upper floors. Those are um, those are the ones. I mean, I would Alicia or someone from the Stanton committee would remember. But there was always uh, question, problems with people standing in line um, next to the hotel. It wasn't. I don't remember the problem being on the sidewalk. But you should check that with the residents. Okay, Alicia, do you remember? Okay, so oh, we Alicia. can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. Okay, so we've always we've always had issues with lines outside going up to their rooftop deck or what have you. Um, there hasn't been lines as as far as people getting going in and out of the hotel itself, but for the the nightlife, there's always been lines, and there's always been this level of disrespect. There's been a level of not communicating. And Angie, who is our tenant leader, has always done her best to stay in communication with the management from the hotel and um, having the best interests of our residents here at Ten Stanton yes. Street. I am I am very much concerned because they don't keep their promises. And it's like every time we have upheld our end of the bargain, so uphold yours. 
you, you signed a MOU with us and you did not uphold many of the items on the MOU. And a lot of it had to do with noise and a lot of it had to do with garbage disposal. And again, not respectful. There are residents that have small children. There are elderly that live in that back area. It is so unfair to be woken up at one, two o'clock in the morning by a garbage truck. Whether it was an emergency or anything, you could have posted a communication to us. I mean, like, how disrespectful is that? You can't tell us in advance that you know that you're having issues with a, a leak or a flood and you have to remove flooring and you couldn't tell us that there's going to be an, a, a, a disturbance in the middle of the night. I think that's deplorable and unfair. So that's all I have to say. Thanks, yeah, Alicia. Right. And you should call you get Donald's number next time, the lawyer, and call him directly. So there shouldn't be any miscommunication. Well, I think that yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that they, they need to be reaching out to the <laughs> to the well, tenants, yeah. but like yeah. They never tell him anything. He comes to the meeting, then it's like I didn't hear anything. Then it goes back and forth, and the tenants get screwed for no reason. I so, did reach out to the tenants association, by the way, and sent the letter and, and no one do they have your number, Donald? Yes. Do they have we your number? We don't I'm go through letters. One, I, you're I'm the one that. that's representing them now. They should have your number. So when you show up to the meeting, they you know what they're talking about. Instead of being like, oh, I didn't get the letter. I didn't get the letter. I mean, anybody could do that. There should be one yeah. point person that should know what's going on. It doesn't matter how big the operation is. Then you show up. Then you're confused, they're confused, nothing happens, and we're going back and forth. And the most important thing is not even you guys getting the space, is the tenants being happy. That's all I have to say. All right, thank you. Okay, so, all right, so I'm just gonna do this whereas clause that whereas the front garden was initially intended to be an overflow space for patrons to mitigate crowding. Um, well, could you, could you turn it the other way that your front garden was initially in, intended to mitigate to mitigate the overflow the overflow of, of crowding yeah of, of page the crowding of patrons that work for you yeah okay um Michelle, can I, can I just point something out? Reading from the original stipulation from 2016 says that the garden was to be operated as casual seating for hotel patrons and the public. Doesn't say anything about being overflow space. This was fully licensed space. And I understand you're gonna vote the way you're gonna vote, but I, I just yeah. wanna be clear. Okay. This resolution does not describe this as, as that was drafted okay. by- I mean, okay describes it as a casual seating for hotel and patrons in the public. That's what okay. was intended. Okay, so if I take it that way. Don't mute me, casual seating. Casual sorry, sorry, we just, we have to, we have to, sorry, we just have to, sorry, sorry, we just have to, we can't run the meeting this way. I'm going to have to mute you because we need to make sure that everyone gets a chance to speak. When you say casual, mute me again. Okay, all right, thank you. Um, Herman, go ahead. Uh, uh, we, the patrons of the hotel or patrons of the nightlife? Hotel. It says hotel, right? Yes. On the stipulation? Yes. yes. The original stipulation says casual seating for hotel patrons and the public. Yeah, Jesse, where did you, do you remember what, where you saw that? Oh, that's that. why I was asking, inquiring about Herman because uh, he was there and he was talking about that, about that space being used for that. But Susan can talk to that. I, I don't remember that. Um, I do remember um, that it was the public was allowed and that people from the hotel. But I don't think the issue was overflow because the issue with with people lining up was not hotel residents, it's the nightlife on the upper floors and they do not line up on the sidewalk. They line up on the side of the hotel under the residence windows. So I, I don't think that the garden was an overflow area. I think the issue with um, 
too many people is on the side of the hotel, which is still the case. Okay, David, I see you raised your hand. Yeah, I think we should stop adding this paragraph. Okay, yeah, if it doesn't track with the stipulations. Herman, are you okay with that or just putting it in here? Yes. Whereas the front garden wasn't originally intended as a yeah. space for hotel yeah. patrons, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, and I counted eight people from the chat who are in opposition um, signing in, um, and some people are included in this plus, you know, so they we didn't double count them. Um, all right, any other, um, uh, anything else committee? Uh, okay. Make a motion to approve if I can. Okay. Yes, yes. All right. Um, okay, let's go into the vote. Okay, Herman Hewitt. Wait, wait, I'm sorry, before we vote. Yeah. Is the paragraph still there? Or what did we decide to do with it? The front garden was initially intended as a space for the public and hotel patrons. That's from the stipulations. That's true. Okay, does it? Okay. Yeah. Got it. Thank you. All right. Okay, Herman Hewitt. And of course, we're voting to approve this denial like we did on last yeah. week. So you need Herman, a second? No, no, just, just vote. Yes. OK. David Crane. Yes. Michelle Cooper-Smith. Yes. Jesse Beck. Yes. Paul Ceros. Yes. OK. Thank you. Um, all right. Thank you, applicants. And thank you, everyone from the community who came um, on this item, as I said, this does not preclude this item from coming back. So please um, watch the agenda. Um, okay, moving on to the next item. Uh, are the applicants for 43 Clinton Street, uh, the CrossFit group here? Yes. You can speak up if you're here. You don't need to raise your hand. Mike Palutis for the applicant. Can you hear me? Yep. Great. Uh, Cameron Bean is also here. I see that he's still muted. Perhaps, Cameron, if you can unmute yourself. Yeah, Cameron is here as well on, beh on behalf of the CrossFit group. Great, okay. thank you. Hello. Okay, I'm just gonna drop the questionnaire into the chat so everyone can see it. Okay, um, so this is an application for a new full on-premises license at 43 Clinton Street. The proposed hours of operation are Monday to Thursday, 11 a.m. to 12 a.m., Friday, 11 a.m. to 1 a.m., Saturday, 9 a.m. to 1 a.m., and Sunday, 9 a.m. to 12 a.m. Um, this is uh, actually closing earlier than the previous applicant who stayed open until 2 a.m. on uh, Fridays and Saturdays, or sorry, the previous operator. Um, the general manager of this applicant uh, for this applicant so that the manager does not have a uh, licensed experience but the general manager was the owner manager and head bartender of Benson's on Essex Street on Essex Street um, which closed during the pandemic um, there are 11 uh, full on-premises licenses within 500 feet according to the applicant in the, uh, the lamp map um, we did not find any um, 301 uh, calls that required NYPD action at 43 Clinton Street or at 181 Essex Street where the GM was the owner since 2018. Um, uh, my understanding is that this is an application for uh, sort of an all day um, cafe. Um, anything that I missed there, Michael or Cameron? No, I, I mean, I, I, that's that's great, Michelle, thank you. I just, I'd point out it's a, it's a very small space. I think it's, yeah the seating capacity, the seating, the seating area is less than 500 square feet. So uh, we are talking about a, a very, very small uh, cafe. Yeah, so I have six tables with 12 seats, one 16 foot, one inch L-shaped bar with nine seats and one front counter. Do you know how long that front counter is? Um, I probably do. Um, while I'm looking for that, I'll, I'll also just mention, um, that my, our, my client did do some outreach and I, I think there's a, oh, approximately yes, 100, 135 yeah, well, signatures in support, but. Yeah, so I counted, so typically we, I understand that we have a little bit of a funky 
situation right now because actually we do not encourage applicants to do petitioning. We do not require it. And we also do not encourage it because of the pandemic. But I counted that seven residents of 43 Clinton Street where this um, applicant is going for and 14 residents of buildings adjacent to or across the street from this establishment signed a petition in support of the application. So typically we would only take into account any, you know, app, any signatures, um, uh, you know, within two blocks of the, of the, uh, the establishment. Um, thank you for reminding me about that. The, 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 ca the counter length, uh, the long side is 10 feet. The short side is six foot one inch. And, um, you're, so you've got, uh, I think it's nine stools at the bar. So there's an, well, I said there's an L-shaped bar, but then isn't there a front counter as well? Oh, let me get the, uh, let me get the diagram. Maybe I'm, one. I think mine may be cut off. Um, three, like. yes, that, 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 that is correct. There's three stools. Uh, like in the window, right? Yes, it overlooks the windows which open up. Okay, and do you know how long that counter is, Cameron? The, the, the frontage of the entire space is 10 feet wide. Um, okay. So when you when you take away the door, or my estimate would be uh, under seven feet. Okay, yeah, I see it's nine feet, nine inches. Okay. Six. Okay. Um, Anyone from the committee have any questions for the applicants? No? Okay. Um, anyone from the public here to speak, Jesse? Did you see anyone sign in? I did not. I did not. If okay. anyone raised their hand, we could do it, but I don't see anyone personally. Yeah. Just to okay. just just some minor clarification. You, you have French doors. Um, yeah, that's right. Or um, fixed doors. Cameron, I mean, do you want to do you want to describe the facade? Yes, it's comprised of a door on the right, and then to the left of the door is uh, French windows. Okay, so we understand the closing on uh, at night on the French windows, right, and doors. Yeah, they committed to closing at ten p.m. at ten p.m. or when yeah. there's any, you know, or when there's any trivia music. as we discussed last week, Herman. Yeah, or music. Okay. But they're not they're not going to have amplified music, so it's okay. Uh, it's not a full kitchen, right? No, it it it's there's a kitchen there, Herman. Predominantly electric cooking. Yeah, I mean it's it's not a it's not a gas it's not a gas um, it's not fitted out with gas. It's going to be. Is there a gas line in there, Cameron? No, there is not. No, it's going to be electric kitchen. Uh, it's it's depicted in the diagram, though. Okay. All right. Thanks, guys. Um, okay. Um, all right. Any other questions from the committee? Any concerns? I'm gonna put in here that they'll be opening no later than 11 a.m. all days and closing by 12 a.m. Sunday to Thursday and 1 a.m. Friday to Saturday. No, I think they're open at nine. Oops. 9 a.m. on Sunday, Sunday, 9 a.m. And Saturday. Okay, hold on, let me... Only Saturday and Sunday, 9 a.m. Saturday and Sunday, 9 a.m. Yeah. Only Saturday and Sunday. Okay, hold on, all right. So they're open Monday to Thursday. Okay, okay. All right, hold on. Monday, Monday to Thursday. To... You want me to say it out? So 11 a.m. to 12 a.m. Monday to Thursday. 9 a.m. to 12 no. a.m. 11 a.m. to 1 a.m. Friday. Right. This person waiting. 9 a.m. to 1 a.m. Saturday. Okay. And 9 a.m. to 12 a.m. Sunday. Mess that up. All right. Thank you. Okay. I know we have this in our stipulations, but it always confuses me. 
Um, okay, I'm just gonna share my screen with the resolution, proposed resolution, excuse me. Just double check my this all all I mean. Yeah, that looks right. Okay. They're closing 12 a.m. All right, sorry, this is an old one. So I included that uh, information about the general manager here. Um, that there were no commercial um, there were one complaints with no, uh, action necessary in that seven residents of 43 Clinton Street and the 14 residents of the adjacent buildings um, were supported. Okay. Any, uh, any flags committee, anything you wanna add here? All right, um, applicants, before we vote on this, I'm just going to read the stipulations out loud to you. Um, let me share that so we can make sure that you are agreeing to the right thing. Um, Irit, I saw that you were in opposition. Is there anything else you'd like to add? I just don't understand why we continue to give out new licenses when we have so many bars. There's clearly no community benefit. I know the operator is good. I know they have a good record in the community, but really, I, I just don't understand. And when their venue opens again on Essex Street, we're gonna have a new bar there and we're gonna have more bars and more bars and more bars, like enough with the bars. Okay, thank we you. Want something else in our community. We have a vision for something else in our community. Please people be more creative than I mean, just making so, money so, off of alcohol. Okay, wait, Paul, Paul, just Paul. That is my opposition, and I'm sorry to see there be no other opposition here tonight. Okay, thanks, Irit. Um, all right, let me just share my screen. Okay, I'm gonna read this out loud, applicants. Um, please pay attention. Okay, so this will be this is a license for a full liquor, wine, beer, and cider um, for a cafe that with a, a kitchen open and serving food during all hours of operation. Hours of operation are 11 a.m. to 12 a.m. Monday to Thursday, 11 a.m. to 1 a.m. Friday, 9 a.m. to 1 a.m. Saturday, and 9 a.m. to 12 a.m. Sunday. Um, you will close any front or rear doors by 10 p.m. or if there's any other uh, sound. <laughs> amplified sound, no DJs, no live music, no promoted events, um, no events at which a cover fee is charged and no scheduled performances. You'll pay, play ambient recorded background music only. You will not apply for an alteration with coming back. You'll not seek a change in class without coming back. You will not participate in pub crawls or have party buses. You will not have unlimited drink specials, including bruisey brunches. If you have a happy hour, it will end by seven, no wait lines. You will have a staff member responsible for ensuring that there's no loitering or crowds outside. You'll post a stipulation by your liquor license and uh, all residents will be able to contact Cameron at this number if they have any issues. Does that sound right? It does, Cameron? Yes, that does, thank you. Okay, great. Okay, thank you. All right, um, committee, I'm gonna move this into a vote unless there's any other things you wanna ask. What? Yeah, I would like David, to. David, go ahead. This is this is a previously unlicensed, unlicensed location. No, it's previously licensed. It was licensed. Okay. Yes, with later hours and we're approving you. Okay. Okay. Any other questions from the committee? Okay. I'm going to move this into a vote. Um, David Crane. Yes. Michelle Cooper Smith. Yes. Uh, Paul Ceros. Yes. Herman Hewitt. Yes. Jesse Beck. Yes. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you applicants for being here and thank you for the community for coming. Um, applicants, we will send you the stipulations form tomorrow morning. The office will send you the stipulations form tomorrow morning. Please sign and return expediently. Um, it will make our lives much easier. It will do, thank you. All right, thank you both. 
Okay. Um, oops. All right. Um, next item on the list is 106 Third Avenue. Is Kurt Hugel here or the other applicants? Kurt, Kurt is here. Kurt, I'm here. Okay. <laughs> okay, great. Um, let me just drop the uh, application in the chat. Okay. Alrighty. Um, this is an application for a new uh, full on premises license at 106 Third Avenue. Um, this is for operate. Uh, operating from Monday to Sunday, 10 a.m. to 4 a.m. Uh, there are, this applicant has 10, uh, is licensed in 10 other places, including a location, I think, on the next block. Um, this location was previously licensed since I believe 2012 as the Brazen Fox, which had hours of 11 a.m. to 4 a.m. Uh, according to the applicant, there are 19. Uh, Full on premises within 500 feet, I counted 23. The SLA land map is like not very good. Um, and I well, always pull the resolution for content down. 301, one second. Um, okay, so there were two commercial 301 complaints at this location with MIPD action necessary since 2018. And um, there were two uh, 301 uh, complaints with action necessary at Jackdaw, which is the applicant's other um, uh, location, I, I think the, the next block on uh, third, oh, sorry, it's on Second Avenue, not Third Avenue, but close by. Um, and that the applicant has nine uh, other licensed establishments outside of CP3. Um, and, uh, okay, I just have a couple of questions before we go to the committee, if that's okay, just to clarify the application, Michael. Sure, sure. Um, okay, is there an entity that's been formed yet, or is it still entity to be formed? No, the, the, the entity has not been formed. Um, we okay. uh, would do that immediately after the meeting uh, if, we're, if, we, if we can reach an agreement tonight. Okay, okay, just for the purposes of the resolution, I want to make sure. Okay, and then um, you noted that you have a pending certificate of occupancy. Is that accurate? It is. Yeah. Okay. Um, but I it believe... has been licensed. It has been licensed for 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 some time, and I, I um, we understand what our obligations will be with the Department of Buildings, but we don't anticipate that being an issue. Okay. Yeah, I saw that the old certificate of occupancies were one hundred and fifty. Um, so, I, is that what you're asking for again? Yeah, I, that, that's what the, the occupancy will be, will be 150 at a minimum. Okay, and then what about the outdoor terrace space? Is that, because I don't, Susan and I looked up the certificate, or Susan looked up the certificate of occupancy earlier. We didn't see that the outdoor space had a CFO. So it's, it's I mean, it is, it is within the frame, the envelope okay. of the building. So it's, it's not a, um, it, it's not a, it's not an external, it is. It's open, but it's within the envelope. So I, I believe that space is going to be included with the rest of the certificate of occupancy, okay. as opposed as opposed to a rear garden where or a side or a side yard where you would, would you where you would need a certificate of occupancy for that space. All right, Susan, you have your hand up. Go ahead. Yeah, um, these CFOs for the last few years always ask if there's outdoor space, and I admit I don't have experience with um, terrace type stuff. But I would just check on that. I, I will check also, but you should just check to make sure that um, that that's included in the CFO for us serving. Uh, we will we'll make full disclosures. Briefly. We'll make we'll make full disclosures with the Department of Buildings. Great, thank you. Um, okay, and then I saw um, that we typically ask our applicants to serve food during all hours of operation. Is that is that possible? It is. They'll they'll Kurt, if I'm wrong, correct me. But there'll be a limited menu um, that that satisfies the the uh, the legal requirements that food be available. But yes, there will be. Yeah, but the full the full food menu, the the more robust menu will will end uh, earlier. That's that's, yeah. that's fine. Okay, great. What time is that? Uh, did we have? I think we put eleven o'clock 
Uh, yeah, eleven o'clock is generally what time the what time yeah. the, the limited menu comes on. So then you want four a.m. every day, but the full menu stops at eleven, right? Right, and we'll do a late night menu from eleven o'clock on. Okay. Thank you for clarifying that. Um, and then, uh, are you so typically we ask that outdoor space close by ten p.m. Is that amenable? The sidewalk cafes. Uh, uh, well, we're not. Sorry, I should right. be more specific. We're not dealing with that. The sidewalk right. cafes, but the outdoor carries. Uh, Kurt, that's a question for you. Well, I, I'm I'm sorry, I didn't understand the question. The question she, is, she, what, we, we generally ask, and our standard in CB3 is that um, when we license outdoor spaces, we ask for them to be cleared of patrons by 10 p.m. Um, so this would apply in this case only to your second floor terrace because we're not dealing with the sidewalk cafes. Okay. Is that okay? Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't think that's a problem. Okay. Okay, great. Thank you for confirming that. Um, okay. And then my last question is about the live music uh, and DJs. Um, uh, do you have a further description of what that entails? So, Kurt, will will can we limit that to a to a um, do we do we anticipate we have a number of days per week we anticipate that live music would be offered? Uh, I I don't think I think we're kind of going into it thinking uh, the idea of it being something to be able to do on the weekends. It's not uh, the the business is not built around the idea of of having live music, so it's kind of an add on for us to you know, two, two different day parts. Um, so so I think. So, Hello? so, so yeah, oh, I understand sorry. that. So yeah, we just need like some clarity on what that will look like days so, of the week, type of music. Like we've also been sort of, I don't know, are you actually intending like, like what kind of, what do you mean by we're sort of working so, on now to say we're working so on I guess I can, DJs here as well. Yeah, I guess so. I, I guess I can clear I can clear that up. But it's you know the the idea of of the music is not uh, is not is not is going to be you know it won't be electric music it won't be amplifiers so anything that gets done would be you know to a, a, an individual or two you know or two people you know playing ambient music for you know let's say it's for the brunch meal period on. Uh, uh, on the weekends. Okay, so I'm just gonna try it. So ambient background music consisting of, uh, we've also, is it DJs like someone standing behind a booth like with like turntables or is it, you think someone that's gonna, we've just been sort of defining this here as like no, a, curator, it, yeah, a, we, a music curator. It'll, you know, be, curated, than, it'll be curated it'll be in curated nature. Music. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so consisting of- You're making me feel old now, the DJ booth. It's okay, it's okay. You. None of us have gone out in a very long time, so. <laughs> um, consist, okay, so ambient background music consisting of music selected by a curator. Um, uh, consisting of a recorded music selected by a curator. And then what kind of live music? Like you mean like a stand-up band up to two people? I, I would say that yeah, if, if we if we were gonna if we had to qualify it, that, that that would qualify. It. So I'm gonna say and an unamplified acoustic stand up acoustic. Well, no. didn't we have a whole thing about acoustic with amplification with the singer? So oh, let's back up. <laughs> and then acoustic stand up band with no more than two musicians. I mean, let's let's say three, just just okay. so I I don't get in trouble for. Until what time? Until 4 a.m.? Yeah, so like what days and what time? Thank you, Paul, for... What are we talking about? Like, if it can't be 4 a.m. every day. It no, it's, a... it's not my intention. And so on the weekends... Who's your intention, then? What are, what are the times? Do you know? I, I, I don't really know. Uh, again, it would boss, be something right? that would be... An... I'm sorry, sir? Are you the boss? I am. Okay, so so tell me. So what I'm what I'm trying to say is that I don't know exactly what the times would be because I haven't opened the business yet, right? So it would be something that we would do to add on. For the business, I'm sorry to interrupt you. So what are we talking about now? We're going to put something like that's what, from this time to this time? And then what happens? 
I'm sorry, I, I don't, I don't understand. Well, this, that we don't. So we want to be specific about the times. Right. So they they want to put times, Kurt. So it, look, the the brunch obviously the 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 jazz brunch would be an early during the day. Correct. That okay. So I think what what Paul might be asking is if we can put a, a cap on it at the end of the day, so that we know that it's not going any later than. Sure. Why don't we use that that the outside number? It won't. There, there won't be any any unplugged acoustic music past 10, 8, 10 p.m. Okay. Michael. Okay. Before okay, I get so... muted, and I'm sorry, Susan. Before I get muted, I'm gonna say this: You're the boss. You should know by now what your plan of action is. You're in front of the link committee, and I was sitting there discussing with your lawyer what you should do, you should not do. You should know this if you have a plan to begin with. So. Go ahead. All right. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Susan. Susan, go ahead. I wasn't. I wasn't saying. Anything. I just said good. <laughs> oh, oh, your hand is up. Oh, I'm sorry. That was. <laughs> I'll lower it. Um, can't we? Can't wait. We can't wait to be in person. Obviously. Um, okay, so I'm going to say, um, ambient background music consisting of recorded music selected by a curator and on the weekends, no later than 10 p.m. an acoustic stand-up band with no more than three musicians. Does that sound right? Yes. Okay. Okay. Ooh. All right, yeah, recording music selected by curator. Um, but, you know, and of course, um, no promoted events, no scheduled performances. That's correct. What you're also agreeing to. Okay, great. Um, okay. Uh, all right. I think that that clarifies all my questions. Committee, do you have any questions for the applicants? That we have well, what what I have is um, I'm I'm sort of totally against the 10 a.m. to 4 all day, all week. Um, I, I just have to say also, um, I, I agree with um, Pablos that if somebody come in here, we have to negotiate their business and if they are not set and they are coming here to guests and stuff, we should just not approve that, um, that item. Um, <laughs> if we have to, if a business person cannot tell us our business because and we have to guess and negotiate with them what it should be. Especially then, when you put so many businesses, Herman. That's my problem. <laughs> yeah. Um, the four o'clock on uh, on uh, on Sunday and Sunday to at least Wednesday, I, I would push it until Thursday. I'm not against. I'm not for four o'clock closing in those midweek, I, I'm not, I don't care whether somebody's living on top of their place or not. It I'm seems, it seems, I, it seems a lot, okay? Uh, so Herman, what are you proposing then? Just can you repeat it? And I'm just also going to say before I do that, this, this um, thing about Closing the main part of the meal at eleven for, and after that it's just a, you know, cookies and cakes and pretzels or whatever it is they do after that. They should serve food all hours of the operation. That's how I feel about that. So, on on from Sunday to at least Wednesday, they should. It should only be to midnight, unless somebody disagree. And then Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, then it could be four. But four all all days is not what I uh, would prefer. Can, can I can I speak real quickly to Go ahead, Michael. to the menu issue? I I, I just want to make sure we understand. It won't be cookies and pretzels. Um, after 11, it, it will. It, the, so the menu that was submitted that will be served until 11 is a robust Mexican style uh, food menu, and it will be pared down after 11, but it will still be food that's coming out of a gas 
kitchen with a cook back there operating it. It's not going to be minimum so what food. What is that menu? So, you know, here down doesn't explain anything to me. What is it? We, we didn't we didn't provide you with two menus. We provided you with one. But what I'm what I can say what I can say definitively is that what will be sent out of the kitchen after 11 o'clock will not be cookies and pretzels. Um, and I think if you look That's at your, don't 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 stress on that. <laughs> I'm just minimizing okay. the fact because you have not told me what that menu looks like. Well, Michael, so, what are we supposed to do? We're supposed to hang out there at night, me and Herman, to see what food you guys provide? Right. <laughs> no, we're, we're, look, I, I understand, but we're, we are talking about a group that, that operates 10 other restaurants throughout the city. That's they, the they, problem. No, but they, but they, but they, have, they have limited food menus that are, that are offered. We're, we're late night hours about... send us, do you have an example of one of those menus that you can, is it, are uh, they online? Um, well, that I don't know the answer to. Kurt, do we have a, a late night menu that we can point them to? See, that's the oh. problem. Right that's the problem. You couldn't even tell me what that is. I'm not the operator. I'm not the businessman. I don't know anything about your business. What I know is what is it? And you can't even articulate that to me. So why should I? Uh... I jump in, Herman. What we, you know, what we're saying here is like we want to know that it's going to be a restaurant, and we want to sort of see the proof because too many restaurants turn into bars, um, crowded bars, loud ones, and you, you know, so we'd like to, we'd like to see evidence of that. And it's going to be a restaurant. Uh, okay, understood. Uh, so we did. We did. Something? We did submit it. We did submit a, a a full menu with with our with our questionnaire. So it's it's not. Anybody it, who's been operating uh, near the East Village knows of this concern. This isn't a new one, and it would be nice to have been prepared. I'm actually more concerned about not knowing the open hours and not having an entity. I think this has come to us before it's ready to come to us, and this is just going to extend the hour, the length of the meeting. You know, I, I, I would like us to get back at some point here to talk about what are the real closing hours. You said 4, 4 a.m. is like an outer boundary. Well, we won't put that into the license. We will so, not allow you to open all the way to 4 a.m. if for some reason you decide that you're going to do that anyway. So I, I know speaking with, with Kirk before the meeting that they were, they were willing to move the closing hour early in the week to 2 a.m. So we, we discussed that specifically. And I know that they were willing to to move on that. So I that I can say with some certainty. Um, I, I think we talked about Sunday through Wednesday closing at two, um, and so that that is something that they're willing to do. And and if you if you want to, I mean, we could certainly build that into the stipulation. Okay, can you say until two the full menu that you submitted to us, since you have not submitted anything else to us. Kurt, that's a question for you. I, I can't speak to that. Sure. Sure, we can do that. Thank you. Okay, I mean, so, so a full menu available until 2 a.m. all nights, Herman? That's what you want? Yeah, full menu. And and the hours that they said that they would uh, they are alluding to. I, I, I will take well, they won't, that. they won't allude. They'll have to agree, so. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's what I'm saying. They, they could yeah. agree or not, but. Is our language until 2 a.m. or until half hour closing, or what do we say? That's what all I'm All hours of operation, but I'll just make it until 2 a.m. all nights. I could compromise on that. And there shouldn't be live music all night. We should have a cap on the live music. I put 10 p.m. for that, Paul. I, I believe we said 10 o'clock. Okay, I didn't hear that correctly. Serving, so. Okay, so serving a, a full menu until 2 a.m. all nights and a late night menu until 4 a.m. It's only for, it's Is only. That, yeah, Thursday to Saturday. I thought it was full menu. All night. All, all hours. All hours, all, all days. Okay, I thought that Kirk committed to 2 a.m. 
but it's open till 4 a.m. on the weekends. So yeah, that, we, right. We we I, that's what we were just talking about. Was was it was the full men? I mean, I I really want to be I want to be clear. We we're not we're not talking about about a a, a finger food menu at, at, after 11 or two o'clock if we make it two o'clock. I it. Kurt is a restaurateur. He, he he operates restaurants, and that and he's going to serve really good, delicious Mexican food in this restaurant. We, we understand that 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 you have concerns about it turning into a bar. We 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 do want to be open late, so we we're willing to to, to work with you. But a full food menu until 4 a.m. requiring a staff of of six people in the kitchen is just from a. a, 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 a you you still you wait, still wait, wait. haven't said what wait, wait. that menu will be. Herman, there's yes. no six people in the kitchen. Six people in the kitchen, I own places, is gourmet. Okay, he's not doing gourmet. We're talking about two, three people, tops, and maybe dishwasher. Exactly. So we're talking about, Michael, about six people. Kurt, am I right on this? Uh, yeah, six is probably a lot, but you are talking about, yes. I saw your menu. Yes. That's two people. So. So, okay, so I think, I, I, so I think I that they're you're not correct. It's two people. I know I'm so, correct. You're the one that owns 10 places, not me. I know, but you um, keep telling me what I do. So I, I just figured I would I would go back and right. let you tell me. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Thank you guys. So let me just interrupt. Let me just interject. So, so Herman, obviously they do not have the menu ready tonight. Uh, is that a problem on voting to like they're not going to commit to 4 a.m. full food? It sounds like, but they don't have the finger food or the you know the late night menu. Is that a problem, Herman? It's a problem for me because they could change it to anything else. It's our experience that that kind of stuff where nobody specify exactly what you're going to do leaves it open to them to do whatever is there. So at the end, if we don't get it tied down, well, yeah. there's no sense we complain about it later. Um, I, I understand. Is there something that we can, like, I mean. I don't have a problem with, he knows what he's doing. He's not super smart guy. He owns his places. I don't have a problem with the menu, but I do agree with what Herman's saying with the hours. So if they stick to the hours, I have no problem. I don't think we should come back to the menu because any restaurant tour come back with the menu the next day or like six hours if you really sit down with one of the chefs. It's not a big deal. That's yeah. So wait, Herman, it's a it's a question of three nights between two a.m. and four a.m. Right? Two. It'll be Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. They'll they will serve a late night menu before two, between two a.m. and four a.m. And every other night they're going to serve a full menu through, till the end of the night. They can. It's, I'm only, you know, expressing my concern because they come and they, they have nothing prepared in order to give us to make a proper decision. And so, like, I'm sitting here taking up about uh, 45 minutes <laughs> of people's time <laughs> because the apparatus doesn't give you stuff. I, I don't know. I, I understand. So I guess I'm just asking you. Like, I want to. Uh, Figure out if we can if we should do this tonight or if we're going to ask them to come back. So David, go ahead. You have your hand up. Yeah, I. Um, they can change the menu at any time. I think I, I believe them. I'm happy with this. Maybe if we really want to put a word in, and I don't want to extend this much longer, we could say in a substantial menu. Um, you know, from two a two to four a.m., which I think is Thursday, Friday, Saturday, not Friday, not Friday, Saturday, Sunday. But I, I don't want to do any more than that. And I don't want us to get any more bogged down in this not having, you know, an example menu for those hours. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, David. And I guess we could say with a kitchen open all hours, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. So just to, to, to sum it up, so it'll be uh, say something. No. Yeah, serving a full menu until 2 a.m. all nights and a late night menu until 4 a.m. Thursdays to Saturday with the kitchen open all hours. All nights. I'm okay with that with full menu. So, Susan, go ahead. Our standard stipulation that we do for every business every month is, I believe it says kitchen open all hours, right? Yes. We say, yes, full service kitchen served from, you know, served during all hours of operation. 
but that we haven't. Be, that will be true. That will be true. Yeah. That, okay. that is true. That, that the kitchen will be open all hours. Yeah, it's it will operate as a restaurant with Mexican food prepared in a full service kitchen served during all hours of operation all days. Okay. Okay. Yes. All right. Um, any other questions from the committee? Okay. Um, Jesse, did you see anyone here from the community to speak on this? I have not, no. Okay, anyone here from the community, please raise your hands. Uh, ideally, if you live close by and would be directly impacted by this application. All right, I'm not seeing, I'm not seeing nothing. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna quickly share my screen so you can see the resolution that I drafted. Thank you applicants for bearing with us on this. Everyone for bearing with us. Okay. Um, all right. Just make sure all of this looks right, please, applicants. Um, I noted that there's two commercial 301 complaints at this location and at um, the applicant's other location in CD3. We didn't get any support or opposition um, to this from any Michelle, adjacent I, residents. Go ahead. I, th I think the tables and chairs are, are, are those, did those come out I of I counted our... from the diagram, so let me know if it's not right. Um, yeah, I, I think we have more listed in our, in our questionnaire and I think that's, but maybe when you add the community table, maybe you're, it's the, the communal table that's, that's throwing off my account. I've got 23 tables with 100 seats in total. Um, well, so I divided. All right, so okay, that's tables. fine. As long as they, I just want to make sure. Yeah. So yeah, maybe that's why because it's 11, 11. That's 22 plus the the one communal table, right? That's 23 tables. Okay. Right. All right. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, anything from the committee that you'd like to add? Um, okay, okay. Um, I'm gonna remove this because we didn't get anything. Okay, all right, let me share my screen with the stipulations, just make sure it's all right, because we changed a lot of stuff during this. Um, okay, stop share. Okay, so I gotta change the hours. Kurt Hugo will be signing. Um... Oh, okay. Okay. So, Kurt Hugel is a qualified representative of NBTBD located at 106 Third Avenue. Um, is signing this for a full on-premises liquor license. You'll operate a full service, re a Mexican restaurant. Um, well, we talked about this. With a kitchen open and serving food during all hours of operation. That's what we discussed. Um, your hours of operation will be opening no later than 10 a.m. to 2 a.m. Sunday to Wednesday. Oh wait, that, what happened? The rest of it got cut off. Hold on, hold on. Is that accurate? Okay. There we go. That's bigger. Opening no later than 10 a.m. to 2 a.m. and closing 2 a.m. Sunday away and and no later and opening no later than 10 a.m. to and closing by 4 a.m. For that phrase, opening no later than. Yeah. Opening no earlier than. Yeah. What if we could if we could no, put no. No, 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 it's on purpose no later than because we want them to open early. Okay, yeah, that's right. Kurt, yeah, can we, we can we them. can we, Kurt, can we absolutely commit to a 10 a.m. opening? Yeah, the 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 10 a.m. I wouldn't 
I, I don't think it really makes it would make any sense to to be committing to Monday through Friday. We could do the weekends uh, no later than 10 a.m. But during the week, we would want that. To, I mean, that number should reasonably be uh, 11, 1130. Yeah. So. Okay. And then what about Thursday to Saturday? I mean, I can put 11 for both of these. It's fine. So you know, I think, that's... I think that Monday, Monday through Friday would be 11 and then Saturday, Sunday could be 10. That's reasonable. Okay, hold on. Then open only at 11 a.m. And opening no later than 10 a.m. close by 4 a.m. Saturday, right? Saturday and Sunday. Oh, God damn it. Okay, oh. I've got to redo this. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. It's fine. Um, um, opening no later than 11 a.m. and closing by 2 a.m. Monday to Wednesday, right? No. Yeah. Uh, so you can put no you can put no later than 11 a.m. every day and, and he can he can open at 10 on the days that he wants yeah, to yeah. open earlier okay. than right. yes, that. I think be, that, that, solves, ideal. that solves the yeah. problem. <laughs> yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah. Thank you, Michael. And closing by 2 a.m. Monday to Wednesday and closing by 4 a.m. Thursdays to Saturdays. Saturday. Sunday to Wednesday, right? Yes. Sunday yep, to Wednesday right. and Thursday yep. to Saturday. That makes it. Yep. Uh, I just got highlight this in the resolution so I remember to change it afterwards. Okay. And number well, five, my, and number five, sorry, Michelle, can we just put a comma after Saturday and put as needed? Because they're, sure. you know, they're not open. Yeah, thank you. You will install soundproofing if not already sufficiently installed. You will close all front or rear facade doors um, and windows at 10 p.m. every night. Um, you'll not have you will not have any events at which a, a, no promoted events, no events at which a cover fee is charged, no scheduled performances, and no TVs. Um, you will not apply for an alteration uh, without coming back. You will not seek a change in class without coming back. You will not participate in pub crawls or have party buses. You will not have unlimited drink specials. If you have a happy hour, it will end by seven. No wait lines. You'll have a staff person um, responsible for that. And you'll conspicuously post the stipulation um, besides your liquor license. Um, residents may contact the manager at the below number. Is this the right information, Ronan Carter? Yep. That's what I pulled. Okay. Um, I will take this out of this. And so we're going to, and the other one is only operate the outdoor second floor terrace from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. Does that all sound right? Yes, ma'am. Yes, it does, okay. Michelle. Thank you. Fabulous. Okay. Fabulous. Thank you. Um, of course, I've now lost my Okay. All righty, committee. Um, time for our vote. Wait, wait, can I, the stipulations, yes. and where did the stipulations, do they, do they talk about number of musicians and so forth? Is that in the states? Uh, okay. Yes. Thank you for my I remember if I saw those. Yeah, yeah. Let me just put that in there. So it's, um, You'll play ambient background music consisting of recorded music selected by a curator and on, on the weekends no later than 10 p.m. an acoustic stand-up band with no more than three musicians. Right? Yes. Yes. Okay. So I'm just going to put that on, under number eight, David, which is where we talk about music and stuff. David, that's a beast of a sandwich you have. David's dinner is always making me jealous. All right, okay. I'm so hungry. That is some sandwich. <laughs> um, okay, all right, thank you. Anything else from the committee before we move to a vote? Okay, Michelle Cooper Smith, yes. David Crane. Yes. Herman Hewitt. Yes. Jesse Beck. Yes. Paul Sierras. Yes. Okay. 
Thank you applicants for coming. Um, the office will send you the stipulations sheet to sign and return um, tomorrow morning. Please send it as re return it as soon as humanly possible to help us all out. We will do that. Thank you all okay. very much. Thank you. For time. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Bye -bye Have a good now. night. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Okay. Final application. Are the applicants for 127 Avenue C to Perry's LLC here? Yes. Okay. Hi, can you just identify yourself? Yes, Michael Perry speaking. Okay. Hi, Michael. Anyone else here with you? Or are you? Hi, Michelle. It's Frank Below. Oh, hi, Frank. Okay. All right. I'm going to hit the highlights here and then I'll ask you guys if there's anything to clarify. So this is an application for a, a new full on premises liquor license at 127 Avenue C that's on the corner of East 8th Street. Um, the applicant is to Perry's LLC. This is an application for um, hours Sunday to Tuesday, uh, 7 a.m. to 12 a.m. Wednesday to Saturday, 7 a.m. to 2 a.m. Um, the applicant has no uh, previous experience operating a licensed business. This is a previously licensed location. It was most recently Loverboy, which had a Sunday through Wednesday, 2 a.m. close and a Thursday through Saturday, 4 a.m. close. There are uh, 12 uh, full on-premises liquor licenses within 500 feet of this application, oops, of this, uh, of this location. And we received um, one letter from six residents, sorry, one letter from six residents um, uh, against this application. I, I think I forwarded it to the committee. I apologize if I didn't because we got it today. Um, uh, basically requesting um, beer wine because they've had bad experiences with um, un, uh, 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 applicants with no experience on this block. Um, is that all accurate, Frank and yes. um, Michael? Not, not the opposition part, but everything I've said before. <laughs> Thank you. It looks like you can make a nice sandwich with your condiment um, cabinet back there. So you tell them. <laughs> <In real. laughs> um, okay, committee, do you have any um, questions for the applicant or for Frank? So it's, what are the times again? What's the menu? So it's um, 7 a.m. to 12 a.m. Sunday through Tuesday, Wednesday through Saturday, 7 a.m. to 2 a.m. And it's like a cafe menu. Um, is that accurate, Michael? Yes, it's like a bistro fair, American. What uh, what uh, what kind of menu? I mean, I know you probably submitted it. I didn't get a chance to take a look. But... Oh, sorry, I forgot to drop the app the application. Let me do that right now. Do you want to just describe some of the dishes, Michael? Sure, I'm happy to. Yeah, the feature is going to be French bread pizza. We have a um, super duper oven where you can bang one out in like 90 seconds. So we're hoping to produce a lot of pizza. Also, it can be to go. Um, we're going to have a vegetable curry. We're going to have a chicken paillard on the grill. We're going to have a full breakfast menu. We're going to buy pastry daily, a lot of bread, just round the clock uh, bounty offerings um from the early hours because there's a lot of people coming from the river and a lot of people come from the park with the dogs so we want to cater to the morning crowd that's that's what we're going for here and and the liquor yeah we we were asking for it but it's going to be supplementary part of the business not the focus i should all... <clears throat> yeah, right. i should also mention that um i i can see the argument about a lack of experience it's one of the reasons we're not pursuing a 4 a.m. license. I, Michelle, did you say Loverboy had a 4 a.m.? I thought it did on the weekends. They did. Yeah, Loverboy had a 4 a.m. Thursday. Which is why Saturday. we're staying away from, you know, yeah, we acknowledge we don't have experience. Michael, you started the hunt for staff and management? Yeah, I have competent people from, from around. Um, hotel on Rivington, Better Days, local bars, uh, Rin Tin Tin. I have quite a good network. Frank, uh they lover boy also owned mother ruin so it's like they were super experienced that's why i had the they had the times i totally believe that we're not who's you you work in the place at night <laughs> <laughs> um uh okay anyone else from the committee have any questions 
Uh, I noticed the proposed hours is 7 a.m. to 12 a.m. Sunday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Saturday, 7 to 2 a.m. So where does the 4, 4 a.m. come from? 4 a.m. Herman was a previous applicant or the previous operator, excuse me, he was licensed to 4 a.m. in this location. Okay. Um, I have a problem with 4 a.m. any days on that block. They're not asking for 4 a.m. Let me, Michelle, let me negotiate with them. <laughs> yeah, Herman, they're not asking for 4 a.m. any of the nights. 2 a.m. Wednesday to Saturday. Yeah, that's, that's the what, latest. Right, that's what I'm saying. That's what I saw. So I don't know where the 4 a.m. comes from. That's why I'm asking. Wednesday to Saturday. It's 2 a.m. Can they do Thursday to Saturday to Saturday 2 a.m. and then the rest and then a full menu the rest of the time? What do you guys what do you think, applicant? That's right, a typical Anthony. for us weekend, think, like Thursday through Saturday is the later nights. I think we can uh, do that. Something we could talk about, Michael. Let's see how everything else um, pans out on this meeting. It's okay. not something, it's not unreasonable. Okay. okay. You're open to it. We're going to go. Okay. I don't know when public comment happens. Herman, what do you think? Uh, I I mean, having another liquor license with a person who never managed it, but, you know, most business starts off not knowing what they do and learn. Hope it doesn't be a disaster for 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 the neighborhood um they do scaling down on the existing one from the people that had it before although they were you know i knew those guys no i understand i i knew i i knew that business <laughs> <laughs> i knew that business um okay um i mean that i could go for um pablos uh only limited to the weekend, three days. I'm with you. I'm with you. That's why I said that. And it has to be full menu. And it yes. can't be like, you know, pizza, three pizzas like the entire night. It can't be that. It has to be a full menu and it has to be a presentable menu. You know, not super crazy, yeah. but not just pizza. Yeah. Yes. We say Understood. we say American comfort food prepared in a full service kitchen served during all hours of operations. So that means that it needs to be prepared like in the kitchen. Correct. Okay. All right, so it sounds like, I, and I agree, I think that the, the Sunday to Wednesday, 12 a.m. and then 2 a.m. Thursday to Saturday. So that's already, that's already three of us. So if you're, if you're amenable to it, I think that that's what you'll be, you'll be getting. David, do you agree with that? So that's turning off Wednesday? Well, you just yeah, so yeah, so it would be Sunday to Wednesday, 12 a.m., Thursday to Saturday, 2 a.m. Perfect. That works for me. I mean, Frank, if you want to discuss it later, we can, but I think that's, that's not, fair. I'm not madly in love with it, but I'm, I'm very interested in just sitting back and letting the committee do their job. Thank you. Well, I, I, I'm going to go with uh, uh, if the, the operator is going to go by what we have a sense of what we're looking for. And he says, yes, he could live with it. Then that's, yeah, the, word I, that's the word I will accept. <laughs> OK, great. Okay. Uh, any other any other yeah, questions, Herman, for them? Yeah, just one question. Um, what does your facade look like? Because it's important, because that's a residential area. Yeah. I don't, Mike, we're not doing any changes to the facade, are you? No. The photo's in the packet, um, Herman. I understand, but sometimes, you know, I like to hear it from... Oh, I'm sorry. ...the operator sometimes. Sure. That's why no, I that's asked the... some of these questions that is in the paper. Go ahead, Mike. Frank, but... <laughs> the, the space is, is built out already. Uh, the guys from Loverboy left kind of suddenly, so they left us with a very ready space so i just need to get the birds out of the awning and fix it and we're going to have the awning extend down with some shade obviously we don't have a um a, a sidewalk cafe license so it's just going to serve as like a shaded area and 
um, the side. We have our COVID area on the side. And that's it. We're, we're not touching anything, really. OK. OK, thank you. Um, any other questions from the committee before I move on? I see Laura has her hand up, so. OK. Um, Jesse, are you ready to time? Okay, so I, I just, yeah, I would Laura, go ahead. clarify, um, you know, just the summary of the residents issue. Uh, the lover boy, you know, you know, Herman said he knows the business. Um, they, they weren't the greatest neighbor, but they haven't been terribly um, busy the last couple of years, especially not during the COVID. So there, there aren't a lot of recent complaints there. Next door at 129 to 131 is a long, long history. Jolie and Babel, just really notoriously awful establishments that created a great deal of problems for the, the, the neighborhood and ended up with the SLA revoking their license. This group of neighbors banded together and actually got a denial from the SLA for a 2018 application at that same place, 129 to 131. The concern is, is that this information be shared because this neighborhood, this corner, this block uh, has, has some history. And for they are very concerned about giving a full liquor license to completely inexperienced operators. We have a few other businesses in the neighborhood who have this model where they're a cafe during the day and they turn into a bar at night. But those are trusted, experienced, operators who've been in the community for years it's um it's very hard to be there yourself from 7 a.m until 2 a.m so you're you're, inv you're you're involving managers we don't know the managers we're not meeting the managers the managers are probably going to be the ones who are there at night and the residents i think have, have very valid reasons to be concerned about this so thanks for the opportunity to clarify that thank you laura appreciate it um, so, so Michael, Frank, you're hearing this. I mean, Frank, you should know very well. Uh, Michael, are you familiar with this, this corner? Yeah, I've, I've been around for a while and I've gone out and met pretty much everyone in the neighborhood, all the supers surrounding. Fortunately, I speak Spanish comes in handy. Everyone's really, really nice. Um, and that's the kind of environment that we want to foster and I, I know I can't just show up some kid from Connecticut and and create a party scene on the corner. We're going to be, frankly, we're going to be nothing like Loverboy. And we're going to be much more toned down. I'm 41. I don't drink. I will be there supervising. Uh, this is this is my dream. So you better believe I'm going to be there every moment I can. I also have to just point out, um, there's no turning into anything from one thing to another at a certain time of the day, the menu stays the same throughout the day. All hours of operation is the same menu. Wait, not breakfast, Mike? We're not going to do pizza for breakfast, but other than that, we can get But I'm saying, can I want. get breakfast at 6 o'clock at night? Absolutely. Oh, then I am right. Um, okay. Okay, cool. Um, my, wife, my wife loves pizza for breakfast, guys. I just want to make one declaration. The reason I said I know that place is because it's located right across from a, a group of buildings that I am involved with. And so, you know, I, I the past people have had the information. So I will get the information of what is happening there because those two buildings on the east side or buildings that I'm involved with. They are low income buildings and I'd hate to see, you know, something disturb their peaceful existence. So I'll just let you know that, so. Well, sure thank you for the heads up, Herman. Michael, not, he's, tell, he's telling you something, Michael. Yeah. No, I know, I, I, I appreciate the eyes watching us. Doesn't matter if it's low income or high income. People get disturbed. They should not get disturbed at late night. That's it. End of story. Fine. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Okay, gentlemen. Um, okay. Any other questions from the the committee for the applicants? 
<clears throat> okay. All right, I'm gonna share the draft resolution then that I've worked on. Um, I'm gonna add in here, so the whereas clause about the neighbors. So whereas six neighbors in a letter requesting a wine beer license instead of a full on-premises license for this location due to the applicant's lack of experience and, um, and issues in the immediate or in uh, quality of life, life issues perpetuated by other licensed establishments in the immediate vicinity. Um, I changed the hours, 7 a.m. to 12 a.m. Sunday to Wednesday and 7 a.m. to 2 a.m. Thursday to Saturday. Marion Comfort Food served, prepared in a full service kitchen. Um, as you see here, with American Comfort prepared a full service kitchen served during all hours of operation. Anything else that people would like to see in here? Committee members, excuse me, would like to see in here? I ask what is what what is the story with uh you know could we consider asking for a beer and wine to start? What is the story with that? What are the considerations? Well, it was an existing liquor license, uh, David. Uh, uh. Yeah, so I think, I don't know. I mean, I know that obviously that there's there's no rubber stamping at the SLA, but I prefer, I feel in this situation at least, that we should have the stipulations around the full liquor recommendation. Yeah, you're 100% right. I mean, if it, was, if it was like a big place like that, I mean, it's not huge. But it would go to be in wine for somebody that hasn't really ran this place. But if we cut down the hours for an existing, I mean, you guys know more than me, so I'll shut up now. So, David, does that? Yeah. Can oh, I, yeah. I understand? Can I ask what you have with a pending letter of no objection? I don't. What is the letter of no objection? Oh, the building is from 1899, so we, there's oh. only an I an I card available. Oh, so you're getting a letter of no objection then? Correct. Michelle, can I ask you just to scroll up so I can see the actual steps? Yeah. Um, yeah. Go, I'll, and I'll, I'll sh I mean, I'll share the full steps in a second too. Okay, I'm sorry. Michael, are you reading this? Yes. I would like to know how the previous business existed without a letter, without they a had one. They had one, Susan. Then why is it still pending? It's not, the building department when, will not give you their existing LNO. They insist on a new inspection. Okay, thank you. So it's not like a C of O, LNOs are more complicated. Okay, um, Frank, I, I will share the full stipulations, um, but anyone from the committee have anything else to add? I don't. Okay. Jesse, Paul, David, you're good? Yes. Okay. Yep. Cool. All right, great. All right, so I'm just going to share the full stipulations now, Frank, so you can see those. I read the whole, read I read the whole thing. I showed it all. Mike, oh, just read it. All right, well... All right, so I'm just going to, I think, I don't know if everything is in there, just, um, I, maybe it was all, I'm just going to read it, just for, for best practices. Okay. Um, full liquor, cafe with the kitchen open and serving food during all hours of operation, opening, opening no later than 7 a.m. all days and closing by 12 a.m. Sunday to Wednesday and 2 a.m. Thursday to Saturday. Um, is this, will you employ a doorman? Is that accurate? I don't security. think we have security. No, we, okay. we will. We will. One, you're right. We do have one. Okay. Um, you'll close any front or rear facade doors at 10 p.m. and every night. No DJs, no live music, no promoted events, no event at which a cover fee is charged, no scheduled performances, one television. Ambient background recorded music only. You will not apply for an alteration before coming back. You will not participate in pub crawls or have party buses. No unlimited drink specials, including bruisey brunches. You, if you have a happy hour, it will end by seven. No wait lines outside, and you'll have a staff person responsible for ensuring that there's no wait lines outside. 
You will post this stipulation form besides your liquor license and uh, residents may contact you, Michael, at 917-817-6058 if they have any issues. Is that all accurate? That's all accurate, yes. Okay, fabulous. Okay, committee, any other questions? Good. Okay. Um, I'm gonna count this vote as our final vote. Um, so I will go in order. Michelle Coopersmith, yes. Jesse Beck? Yes. David Crane? Yes. Herman Hewitt? Yes. Ellen Liu? Ellen's not here. Alex Meltano? Alex's not here. Paul Siros? Yes. Okay. Thank you, um, applicant. Thank you, Frank. Um, the office will send you the stipulation form tomorrow morning and please return it expediently. I'm sure you've heard this one million times. Um, thank you everyone for coming here tonight. Thank you um, committee for your hard work on all of this. Um, I will see you next month. Thank you for taking the time everybody. Have a good month. Thank you everyone. Thank you, Susan. All right, bye. Thank you everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you.